Hi, my name is Lauri, and now we're going to talk a little bit about synthetic biology and high throughput methods how to create biosensors. We human beings are really bad at sensing weak signals in, in the nature. We cannot see buried landmines, we cannot smell polluting chemicals in the nature, we cannot taste toxins in our drinking water. We have created uh, really, really sophisticated analytical methods to detect all those things. But those instruments are really expensive and next to impossible to use on field. For example, arsenic is a really common element in the soil, but when it leaks into our drinking water, it becomes a tasteless and odorless killer. In Western world, we can do analysis on our drinking water and monitor the levels of arsenic. So you can be pretty sure that the water you're drinking is safe. But in developing countries, those instruments are not available. The water is taken from wells, and all the laboratories are far away. So what we would need is a simple kit that would be really cheap and easy to use that anyone could use to uh, monitor the levels of arsenic in their drinking water. Now, what analytics is all about is taking a weak signal and converting it into something that we can see or detect. Microbes are evolved into sensing their environment and reacting upon it. So if we could use a microbe to take the input signal and turn it into something visible, like light, that would be really handy. We would call that a biosensor. And now the structures in the microbe that would do it would require some part that takes the input signal and then launches some kind of output signal. This we would call a reporter gene. Um, Reporter gene should be very sensitive. It should detect really small amounts of the input signal. And it should also be very specific. It should not react to just anything. Now, let's take a bit closer look into this, this promoter part of, of the reporter. Um, we could cut it down into smaller parts. Some of the parts would, would be responsible for binding transcription, uh, transcription factors. Some other parts would be responsible for binding polymerases and some other parts would be responsible for binding ribosomes. There would also be some linkers that would space those elements from each other. Now we can rationally design these parts, um, building all different kind of variations, and then combine them together in different kind of uh, combinations. Now, we would pretty soon run into a problem that we have many of these combinations, and that would result in a huge number of samples that we should test Essentially, that would result in a huge number of microbes that we need to test for, for their capability to function as a, as a biosensor. And that is something we can do with robotics. Hi, my name is Angela. So in this experiment, we are going to test different promoters constructs. Since we are dealing with a huge amount of different possibilities, we need to be assisted by a robot to make it feasible. So basically, what the robot will do for us is to introduce the different promoters construct into bacteria. Then we will test the promoter activity by measuring the cell's luminescence. Hi, I'm Claudia. In this experiment, we are interested in identifying a mutant which shows stronger activity than the other potential candidate strains to finally create a more efficient reporter. So when we looked at the data, we saw that if you completely destroy the promoter, you don't see any activity that is measured by luminescence compared to a wide background of potential strains which show relatively low and comparable activity. However, we were able to identify one particular strain which showed very strong luminescence and is therefore a potential candidate for further experimental follow-up. Synthetic biology not only gives us the tools to create all those combinations, but more importantly allows us to select from a huge amount of variation. In this case, we could select the one microbe that does the job for us pick it from the sample and trace back the combination of elements that we actually use to make it. In this case, this specific combination allowed a sensitive and very specific detection of the input signal and a very dynamic output signal. Now, this microbe could be used to create a sensitive, cheap and easy to use tester to make sure that your drinking water does not contain arsenic. This is now science fiction. This is done already in several companies developing this technology. Synthetic biology allows us to create these biosensors for practically anything.